I'm very happy to have been Afri's patron along with my wife Leah for many years. I've been impressed with the work of Afri since I first came in contact with the organization in 1984. I was invited to Ireland by Afri that year, the same year as the famous and inspirational anti-apartheid strike by the young workers at dance stores took place. These courageous young people had gone on strike to have their right to refuse to handle the fruits of apartheid respected. It was no surprise to me that Efri stood four square behind these young strikers throughout the course of their long and eventually victorious strike action. I would wish that other people would be able to support them. And they have made their point, yes. So do you think it's now time to give up the strike? Well, I don't know whether you should say to give it up, but I, I mean, I don't know. Um, I would have liked to see a groundswell of support uh, coming their way, but they certainly have made their point and at very great cost to themselves. And this is what I would wish to commend them for. I'm, 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 uh, I must say that they are quite remarkable young people. I've been hosted by Efri on a number of subsequent visits to Ireland and have kept in touch with their activities over the years. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Wonderful, wonderful. It's, it's really wonderful to be here, despite the weather. Your welcome more than makes up for the weather. You've been so wonderful. And we want to say thank you very much. Oh, I've learned one or two words in, uh, to say hello. Dear Gwit! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much. It is, it is a very great privilege, a great joy to be here with you on this day and thank you all of you for coming. We, we get all kinds of stories uh, about Tutu in South Africa. Uh, they tell, they tell of how when Archbishop Tutu died, he, he went to heaven. And when he got to heaven, St. Peter said, uh-uh, uh, you have to go to the warmer place. And so uh, I duly went down to the warmer place. Two weeks later, there was frenzied knocking on the doors of heaven. And when St. Peter went, uh, he saw old Nick standing on the, on the doorstep. And he said, and, and what are you doing here? He says, well, you send Bishop Tutu down there. He's causing so much trouble. I've come to ask for political asylum. <laughs> I'm impressed by their unwavering and long-standing commitment to justice and peace throughout that time. They have persevered in supporting the struggles of many oppressed peoples throughout the world. They have worked in solidarity with the peoples of Latin America, the Philippines, and East Timor. They supported the people of Ogoni before, during, and after the execution of Ken Sarawiwa and his colleagues. And when this reality came home, to their own backyard, they supported the people of Ross Sport in County Mayo in their admirable struggle against Shell. Their commemoration of the Great Famine in Ireland is not about self-pity or nostalgia, but about applying the lessons of that awful experience to the world we live in today. Every also consistently highlights the obscenity of the arms race, the wastage of resources on weapons, while so many go hungry in our world, tackling the issues of conflict and climate change. What I find unique about EFRI is the way in which they link the local with the global. It is often easy to be concerned about things far away. And of course, this
This is extremely important. But it is equally important to identify and name the same abuses of power happening in our own backyard. This is something EFRI has never shirked from doing and I salute them for that. I believe that groups like EFRI should be supported and encouraged because such independent voices are more essential than ever in our world today. Thank you.